Hey, Ross. Hey, Kev. We are at it again, talking about smart thermostats. That's right. Uh, and I guess we're still doing it because they continue to evolve. That's right. Here's the evolution right here, right? The gold knob thermostat. <laughs> Look yep. at that. Thing. Old school. So literally wired um, through the wall down to the basement and Mercury your equipment, bulb. Yep. which means you came over and you physically moved it around That's to control right. it. That's right. Those yep. are gone. Then yep. came this. These were still wired, though. Wired, but wireless communication. Right. So you could take out your phone, you can control it, you could actually check on the temperature of your house. Um, but that was 10 years ago. Which is remarkable to think that this is now an older generation. Crazy, right? And so what, this is the newest generation? That's the newest generation, yep. What do these do for me? So they, these do a lot of things. So first off, they communicate with sensors like this. So you can deploy remote sensors. These are wireless all around your house in the rooms that you actually live in. Yep. Okay, so not the hallway where that's located. So you actually have one in the living room, the kitchen, the bedrooms, for example, and it has motion, so it knows when you're in that room. So this is talking to this. Yep, and it tells you the temperature all across your home. And then what does it do with that information? So that more precise information will tell, be able to tell the furnace or the HVC unit when to turn on, when to turn off. Because you don't want the hallway perfect temperature. You really want the kitchen or where the bedroom or wherever you are to be the perfect temperature. Exactly right. So yep. that's a nice feature with the whole new generation. I presume yep. these all represent the newest generation? Yeah, these are the newest generation for different manufacturers, and a lot of them have really cool features, right? Like geofencing. Which which is what? So geofencing is the idea that these thermostats can basically have communication with your phone to know the GPS location. And okay. you set a radius around your house, right. let's say five miles. Okay. If you drive with your phone outside that five mile radius, it's gonna put your system into setback mode. It says you're away. It's your way. You're not in the house, so don't heat or cool the house. Why heat it? Gotcha. Exactly. Geofencing. Yep. What else have yep. they got? So they have a lot of other features. Um, for example, auto scheduling. If it sees that you're walking in front of it, it knows that you're, ho you're home. But when it doesn't see motion over a certain period of time, it knows that you're away. Oh yeah, look at that. So as you went in front of it, it actually, it, it sensed the motion and it reacted. Mm -hmm. uh, so motion sensing for auto scheduling. That's similar nice to geofencing, except this one's based on activity or lack of activity in the house. Locally, exactly. Especially if you have a lot of these in the house. Yeah, very cool. Uh, smart fan circulation. So like if it notices one room's really hot and one room's really cold, what it can actually do is just run the fan and mix the air between the hot room and the cold room so it uh, reaches equilibrium faster. Just stir it up. Stir it up. And this yeah. way you're not paying to make cold air or make hot air. That's right, yeah. Very these cool. also have, a lot of these have voice activation so they are either gonna work with different smart home platforms in your house and a lot of these work with different accessories like humidifiers, dehumidifiers, mm -hmm. and ventilators like ERVs. Okay, so brass tacks, what do they cost me? So these can range anywhere from seventy-five to about three hundred dollars. Three hundred bucks a unit. I know, I know. Come on, man. So, but keep in mind when you look at the energy bill of a house, about yeah. fifty percent of it is for heating and cooling. So that's a big nut. It's a big nut. And so, if you can save some money by putting these in, and a lot of studies have been out there about five to fifteen percent in terms of energy savings, that actually pays for itself pretty quickly. So you can actually earn that back. That's right. Yeah. All right, and so in terms of installation, let's talk about that because, you know, the old ones were, well, there was a simple wire, or two wire, I guess, coming out of the wall, and they, boom, that was it. That was it. Yeah, two wire. Exactly right. And so now these, what do they need? Yeah, so the new ones need five wires for heating and cooling. Okay. okay. So the blue wire, this blue wire right here is the common wire. That's the C wire, and that's the most important one for smart thermostats to work because that provides a 24-volt power supply to each of these brains to actually let them work. This one didn't need any power at all. Those need, yep. otherwise we're stuck on batteries and that's a pain in the butt for a thermostat. That's right, so you really need that common wire to make this system work and not have to replace the battery over time. Yeah, cool. All right, yep. so let's talk the next generation. Sure. <laughs> like what's in the future coming our way? Yeah, so demand response is a big one. What's right? that? So you have demand of energy, which people are using, and you have supply, which is the utility company providing electricity to the grid. Yeah. And they have to balance that. And there's a program called demand response. If you opt in, it's a voluntary pr uh, program, what the utility company can do is reduce the set point of your thermostat. So everybody's coming home from work at the same time, turning on their air conditioning in Southern California, yep. your taxes, the utility, they That's can right. pick you if you said, I'm, I'm game. Yeah, you opt in. Yep. And turn your air conditioning down or off. Yep, they give you dollars for that, but what they're trying to do is prevent that peak grid event from occurring and have to buy expensive power. It's kind of cool, a little spooky, yep. but that's yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, a little spooky, you see the thermostat move. Yeah. What else they got? Uh, so time of use rates. So in certain areas, the utility companies are switching from a, to, from a fixed rate to a time of use rate model for billing. Same idea. At those peak hours when you come home from work, they're like, we're going to charge you more. Right, exactly. And maybe some people will use less. That's right. So, so what does that do for me? So we can program in this when those time of use peak rates are occurring. So what it does is, let's just say two o'clock is when a peak rate is gonna, is gonna uh, be enabled. So what it does is it will heat or cool, preheat or pre-cool, and then actually cut the compressor off, for example, at two o'clock and let it coast Very through cool. all those high peak hours. Super, super cool stuff. Yep. Downsides, because there are always some. 
Yeah, of course. So auto scheduling, that a lot of people have a love hate for that. If your schedule is all over the place, that's probably one right. setting that you want to turn off. Right. Okay. Remote sensors. This right here is giving the brain, the thermostat, more information, but it's not a zoning control system. It's not targeting airflow to one room versus the other. It's still a heating, cooling, single zone system. Yeah, gotcha. And the other one is, you know, with any Wi-Fi connected device, it's all going to the cloud. So there's yeah. always a risk of hacking, and you want to read the fine print from the manufacturer, how they deal with your data. All right. Well, as always, Ross, uh, good information, and I'll see you at the next generation. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.